Hello again, dudes. Welcome back to my garden. I'm Chris Catron, Director of Caledonian Conservation Limited, an ecological consultancy based in Scotland. I'm also an area organiser for the British Arachnological Society's Spider Recording Scheme. And this is visit two of a coordinated survey called the Garden Spider Survey. Arachnologists throughout the United Kingdom are surveying their gardens. Once a week, same time of the week, so a Friday or a Saturday, we're going out and we're vacuum sampling using our bug vax to see what spiders we find in our lawns. Now this should be really interesting because we'll get different species across the United Kingdom you'd expect, so different things in Scotland than in the south of England, and also species will become active and start being found and reaching maturity at different times of the year because it's a bit colder in Scotland than it is elsewhere in the UK. And even last week we had blue skies, fluffy clouds, this week we've got lots of dark clouds over the sky, so the weather's different too. This is actually a good thing though, because last week was really cold. It was 5 degrees at best, whereas today's about 10 degrees, so it's twice as warm. Um, and that's that blanket of clouds keeping things nice and cosy for us. It's also rained yesterday, whereas last time it had been dry for a long period, so that will have made a difference too. So come and join me guys, let's see what we find. So we have the same equipment as last week. We've got a net to put on the end of the vacuum sampler. We've got a white tray to empty the insects and spiders into. We've got some tarantula forceps to pick things up delicately. We've got a tube with 70% isopropanol in to preserve the invertebrates. And we have ear defenders because my bug vac is really noisy. So dudes, here's a reminder of what we're about to do. I'm going to fire up my bug vac and I'm going to vacuum sample my grass for two minutes. Let's go. So what do we have today? Well, I can already see there's a lot more moving around than last time. That could be a bit further in the season, a bit warmer, a bit damper. I'm excited. There's certainly spiders in there. Let's catch them. There's so much more than last week. This is awesome. How did we do? Well, we got a lot more spiders than last time, but we're going to have to take them to the lab to identify them to species. Now we're back in the lab, we'll be able to take a closer look at the spiders and identify the mature ones to species. So here we have our two garden spider samples so far. This one is from week one, and this one is from week two. You can already see there's a difference, at least in the quantity or the number of spiders that we've caught. What have we got? Well, we have 53 spiders and one harvestman. That is a huge increase on the 15 spiders we found last week. Let's see how many of them are mature and what species we can identify. I'll be looking at the spiders under a microscope, which is a Brunel BMZ zoom, and I'm using gooseneck LED lighting. While identifying spiders under the microscope, I'll be using some particular bits of equipment. A petri dish to put the spiders in, some blunt forceps for gentle manipulation, and some pointy forceps of different sorts to do some more delicate manipulation and possibly dissection. Of course, we need tea. Today I'm going for loose leaf gunpowder green, and I'll be listening to Alice Cooper. So dudes, I just wanted to show you this close up. Here we have two arachnids. 
One is a spider, Aranea, and the other is a harvestman, Apiliones. The spider is on the left, and it's a wolf spider, Lycosidae. It's actually Pardosa amentata, the spotted wolf spider. On the right is a harvestman. This is Nemastoma bimaculatum, the gold spotted harvestman. You can see the two gold spots, which makes it very easy to identify. You can do this one without looking under a microscope, although it's worth noting that some don't have the gold spots, and sometimes they have white spots. Sometimes they have no spots at all. There are some key differences between spiders and harvestmen. For example, spiders have two body parts, whereas harvestmen only have one. Spiders have six or eight eyes, our wolf spider here has eight, whereas harvestmen have two, and harvestmen eyes are on a turret. Spiders spin silk, whereas harvestmen don't. Spiders are venomous, and harvestmen aren't, but both are top predators. In fact, I've seen harvestmen and wolf spiders encounter each other in the wild, and very often it's the harvestmen that goes away the victor. Harvestmen have a cool defensive feature. They produce a liquid which travels around the outside of their body on grooves to try and deter predators. None of the harvestmen in Scotland or the UK produce a chemical which is harmful to people. However, in other countries it can be quite pungent, and they are known in some parts of the world, such as Brazil, as stink friars. Oh wow, Nerian Montana, the spring hammock weaver. This is so cool. This Nerian is larger than the other species, and it has annulated legs, so that's stripy legs. They become less common the further north you go, so I'm really chuffed that it's in my garden. Here we have a new family of spiders from my garden, Tetragnathidae, the long-jawed orb weavers. This is Pachygnatha dejiri, dejir's thick jaw. It's a very cool looking wee spider. This is a male spider. You can tell because it's got swollen palps, so that's like boxing gloves on the ends of his arms. There are secondary sexual organs, and they are what we need to get a close look at to identify him. As you can see though, it's a bit tricky in that position, so I'm going to dissect one of those palps off. That's the dissected palp from the money spider, the linophyid, that we were looking at a second ago. We can manoeuvre it to just the right angle to look at all of the complicated features in the palp. These are the secondary sexual organs of the males. They're very specific to species, and so we can identify exactly which money spider we have. We need to compare this to diagrams in books. This is Tyzo vegans, the wandering Tyzo, a very cool wee spider. Behold this truly glorious epigyne. This is Diplostyla concolor, or the long-tongued spiderlet, and it has a truly wonderful epigyne. That is the female genitals. Wow. And that's a male Diplostyla concolor. Look at that palp. You can see the lock and key setup to go with the epigyne of the female. Now this is what I'm talking about. Check out this wee money spider, a wee linophyid. It's a wee boy. Look at all those spikes going around its cephalothorax. That's its body and head combined. They're so cool. And its palps are elongated with giant blades on and various spikes. Imagine if this was the size of a cat or a dog. It would be a truly amazing animal to behold. This is the world that we can look at down a microscope or with a hand lens. Aragonia are really cool because they sing. They have ridges on their chelicerae, that's their jaws, and the males rub them to sing to females. Isn't that awesome? Well, those bladed palps surely help you identify Aragoni to genus and the males. A closer look at the palps are necessary to confirm the species. In particular, the palpal tibiae can be really useful. In this case, it's a tooth-palped money spider, Aragoni dentipalpus. Okay, dudes, I've identified all the arachnids in my sample. That's all the spiders and harvestmen. At least all the mature ones I can get to species. And we have one species of harvestman and 12 species of spider. That's 11 new species of spider from my garden since last week. The spider we've recorded twice is Aragonidentipalpus, the tooth palp money spider. Everything else today was new. 
I'm really pleased with that result. It brings the total number of species of spider recorded in my garden during the garden spider survey to 16. I don't think that's too bad for this time of year and up here in Scotland, so I'm very happy. If you have a vacuum sampler or bug vac and would like to take part in the garden spider survey, please let me know and I'll get you hooked up. Anyway, until next week, catch you later dudes!